Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel again. Thanks for tuning in. We've been talking about the differences between the Church of Christ and the denominations out there in the world today. Last week we talked about the Lord's Supper. I thought this week we might just take a minute or two talk about the collection. I know a lot of folks out there who don't go to church of any shape or form. Uh, a lot of folks think that the church is, is all about money and they'll say things like, well, Jesus never said anything about money and it amounts to an attack on whether or not we're authorized to take up a collection. Bottom line is that Jesus actually did have a good bit to say about money in Luke 12. In Luke chapter 12 at verse 21 says, as it's, it's the conclusion of the parable about the foolish farmer, uh, as it talks about the man who says, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops as he was going to tear down his barns and build bigger ones. And the Lord says, you fool, tonight your soul will be required of you. That is concluded as the Lord is teaching there, and he says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. That it's, it's talking about where a man's heart is, where a man's treasure is, that that's where his heart will be also. A little further down in the verse, it says that very thing. It says, sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So when people say that Jesus never said anything about money, that's just not true. The Lord had a good bit to say about money, actually. And that money is not the root of evil. Uh, when it talks about that verse, that is a verse that is misquoted because the verse says, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Money is simply a tool. But as we talk about the collection, like I said, we're talking about how the, how the Church of Christ is different than, all, than the denominations that you see out there today. And when it, when it comes time for the collection, which we'll talk about is authorized in the Bible, but how denominations, how they've twisted it and how they've, how they've perverted it, how they've changed it is, and I think we've all, we've all seen this before, if we've ever been to one of those denominational churches, that, you know, they'll, they'll pass the collection basket, and then what do they do after they're done passing it? Very often they'll say, pass it again, and they'll, they'll pass the basket again, and they'll pass it two or three times, perhaps, that you'll see that sort of thing happening. And not only will they pass it on Sundays, They'll pass it every time that they, they gather together. And it's, it just seems kind of odd. You know, last week, like I said, we talked about the Lord's Supper. And they'll say, well, we don't want to take the Lord's Supper on every Sunday because we're afraid that the Lord's Supper will become boring. Well, why don't they make the same argument with the collection? If the Lord's Supper gets boring, taking it every week, doesn't the collection, doesn't giving to the Lord, doesn't that get boring every week? And that's where you just see that argument doesn't hold water. But you'll see them, they'll, they'll pass the basket every time, every time that they gather throughout the week, and they'll pass it multiple times. If they don't feel like they've gotten enough, uh, they'll keep passing it. Sometimes in these denominational churches, you'll see them, and they'll have a sign, you know, up on their wall, and it'll have, uh, you know, sometimes it'll be a thermometer or they'll, they'll have their, their goal of how much, they, how much they want people to give. And they'll have things like that. Sometimes you'll even hear uh, denominations. You'll hear them talk about it. If, if you talk to their members, and maybe if you're tuning in, maybe you've heard, maybe they do this where you go, and, and if you have a problem with it, leave it in the comments section. Um, that would be great. But sometimes you'll hear folks, and their church will actually request and will actually demand, if you're going to be a member of their church, they want you to turn in your W-2 tax forms to them at the end of the year so that they can check it 
whether or not, so that they can compare it with what you're giving. I want you to just think about just how crazy that sounds. Can you imagine Jesus Christ telling the disciples, now I want to see your tax forms at the end of the year? That that's just ludicrous, that that's not how the Lord, that's not how the Lord treats us, and that's not how the Lord wants us to treat Him. But those are the sort of things that you see in the denominational world. Whereas if we look at Scripture, we see something very different. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, let's just see, see how, how giving is supposed to happen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, at verse 1, it says, Now concerning the collection for the saints. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the collection for the saints. As I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. So let's ask the question. As Paul is dealing with that church in Corinth, and he's given the same directions to Galatia, and I would suggest, you know, is, is Paul giving different instructions to those two churches than what he's giving to all the other churches? The answer is, of course not. That what's happening here is that the giving that Paul is explaining, that the Holy Spirit is explaining by Paul, how this needs to happen. So, it's on the first day of the week. You know, we talk, we, we talk about having authority for what, for what we do. Where do you have authority for taking up a collection uh, all throughout the week? If we're going to do all things in the name of the Lord, like the Bible tells us to do, where do you have authority to give multiple times, to take up a collection multiple times throughout the week? You simply don't have that. That what you have in Scripture, what you have being regulated, what you have being given, is the Holy Spirit commanding that this collection, and what is this collection for? It's the collection for the saints. And this collection was supposed to be taken up on the first day of the week when the church was assembled together. And then we go back to our Bible study from last week as they assembled to break bread. One of the other things they also did was they took up an offering. And it was the collection for the saints. And it says, let each one give. Our verse says on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper. That if we want to have that, that personal relationship with the Lord, and that is the relationship that the Lord wants to have with us, and that's the relationship the Lord wants us to have with him, that each one of us have this responsibility. Namely, the Lord has blessed me individually, and the Lord has blessed you individually. And the Lord would like for us to say thank you. And as we give back, we're not, we're not giving back to the church. The collection is for the saints, undoubtedly from this verse. That's what this verse says. But we are giving to the Lord. And we, what we're doing is we are giving back to the Lord as the King James Version here says, as God has prospered us. That we are simply stewards. That on the first day of the week, and that's, that's something else we might talk about. A lot of people anymore, they look at uh, they look at Sunday as the weekend. That Sunday's not the weekend. Sunday's the first day of the week. And you look back at how Israel gave to the Lord in the Old Testament, and they were they were supposed to give the first fruits. Now you think about how they give and how we're supposed to give, and I think one of the lessons that we can apply and one of the lessons that we can learn is that we're not supposed to give the Lord the leftovers, that we want to bring the Lord the first fruits. We don't sit down and write out every other bill that we have and then say, well, I only have this much left to give to the Lord. No, we bring the Lord the first fruits that he has blessed us with. That that is a, a beautiful picture, and it is a joy to do. So as we give, we give on the first day of the week. We're not going to ask for W-2s. We're not going to ask for tax forms. We're not going to do anything like that. 
Because what we're going to do is we're going to do what the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 16, but also over in 2 Corinthians 9. At verse 6 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give, so there's that personal relationship again, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And that's what the Lord wants. That what you see again and again is you see a repetition of what the Lord said back in Luke chapter 20, that where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart will be also. That if you begrudge the Lord, that if you're not a cheerful giver, then the Lord doesn't want your money. The Lord doesn't want your money because your heart's not in the right place. That you are not giving cheerfully. That you feel like you're giving out of necessity. And that's not what the Lord wants. The Lord wants us to give back. And we are giving back to make sure that the Lord's work can go on. Remember, it's the collection for the saints. But also what the collection is, I would suggest that it is a, a very it is a very good test. That it is it is a test that the Lord has for us to see whether or not to see whether or not we love money. That the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So that if I'm not giving back because my heart's not in the right place. If I'm not saying thank you because my heart's not in the right place, the Lord doesn't want me to give out of necessity. The Lord is looking for willing volunteers. Giving back to the Lord, it is a good thing. It's a blessed thing. It, it is for a specific purpose. How it is done has been given to us in the Bible. And it is, it is not something that is taboo. It is something that the Lord spoke often about as he spoke about riches. It is something that is mentioned throughout Scripture. So I thought, I hope you, I, I thought we might talk about that this week. I hope you've enjoyed the study. You might study on it further. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, like I said, leave them down in the comment section. That would, that would be great. Thank you for studying along with us. God bless you. I hope you have a good week. Hope you have a good week. I hope you keep studying. Keep praying. Thank you for listening.